after taking a much publicized year off, 39 year old veteran has put up really respectable numbers as you can see. And Reto Berra has been busy starting his ninth game since being recalled from the American Hockey League on November 3rd. Still looking for his first win at home. Well, he's been exciting at time as of late. Matt Stajan asked Bob Hartley this morning, no Mark Giordano for a month, who filled the void? And he didn't even let me answer the question. He said Matt Stajan had a lot of praise for number 18 and the leadership that he has brought to the Flames dressing room. And he's out there to begin this one for Calgary. Flames falling 2-1 in overtime to Columbus on Wednesday. Gilbert's shot goes wide. Jackets lost 4-1 up in Edmonton last night. Barkov can't slow it down. He gets it back. Little give and go with Brad Boys, the veteran. Trying to come out in front. Turned away. Boys gets it back into the slot. Barkov tries to get it to Upshaw. And it's shoveled ahead and Calgary will get it out. Tap forward by Stepniak. Camilleri gives chase, trailing in on Campbell. Gilbert is there, and he'll play it up along the board. Scott Bukestad, his nephew, is out there as he dumps it in. Nick Bukestad, one of the young centermen for this Florida Panthers, his uncle, former Minnesota North Star. Berchie dumps his man in the corner. The Branson has it for Florida. Missed fires, but Fleischman gets enough of it. And it's into Calgary territory. Bukestad after. He'll play it off the glass. Huberdo can't knock it down. Monahan spins up. Huber. And no room there as Huberdo tied up by Monahan. And it looks like a penalty coming up against Calgary. Keys to the game are brought to you by Budweiser. Great games are waiting. Calgary Flames, there, there's no catch up tonight. And I don't mean to put that on your hot dog, uh, but they're 3-9-3 and three when the opposing team scores first, so they have to get something happen. No time to rest for the Panthers. Peter Horacek gave the team the whole day off. He thought his team was pretty lethargic last night in Edmonton at the end of a long, long road trip. So it was inevitable in his 23rd NHL game, Sean Monaghan would finally take a penalty. He takes a hooking call, and the Florida Panthers go out for a power play to start this game. They were 0-5 up in Edmonton. And they are really struggling with a man advantage this season. Kulikov at the point to Campbell. He's going to see a lot of power play time, Will Brian Campbell, the veteran. Quarterback on the point, and, and what he does so well, he handles the puck. He's a very composed. He likes to play offensive type of, uh, of hockey, come from the defensive position. So, yes, he'll probably play the whole two minutes. Fleischman drives the line, puck lays free, and a shot over the net by Huberto. Gilbert coming in, Calgary gets to it, but can't get it out. Bukestad keeps it in, gives it away, Weidman with it up to Michael Backlund. He'll hit the red line, and he's going to dump it in. Thomas will set it up, 59 seconds to go in the minor to Monaghan. Tom Gilbert, longtime member of the Edmonton Oilers, will lay it ahead. This one's flipped in by Scott Gomez. There, out of the net, gives it away behind the crease, but Defensive coverage by Calgary. Camilleri coming over. He'll poke it free, and the Flames get it down the ice. You've got to like the Flames' penalty kill, at least to start this game. And great communication there between Schmid and Calum uh, Camilleri as they were trying to work that puck off the near side boards. They were talking, and they made that quick little pass. Now Marcel Gotch on the boards. Intercepted. Taken away. Flames have it. Head up. Blair Jones will just lay it down in the floor to end. Bob Hartley talked about his want and desire to get Blair Jones out in special teams. He got a few minutes of penalty kill right there with 10 seconds to go in Florida's power play. He's very sound defensively and he uses his size very well. He's the camp in probably the best shape we've seen him, not only is conditioning wise, but physical. Penalties over, Monaghan back out on the ice of the Flames. Killing off another power play. Berchi crosses the line, holds up, drops to Hoodler. Yuri Hoodler. Back to the point, Weidman gets it down below the goal line. It ends up on the stick of Hoodler. Thomas spying him from inside the cage. Hoodler comes out, turns around, Monaghan just swiped at it and missed. Russell along the boards, puck taken away. And Hayes gets it back. Wired from the Chicago Blackhawks eight days ago. He dumps it in, trailing it on Weidman. Chris Russell. As we hit the four-minute mark of the first period, no goals, no shots, nothing up on the scoreboard right now. 
good penalty kill. That's what's up on the board right now for the Flames. They'll be happy about that because they did not want to give up an early goal in this game. Colborn. Going to get it deep in Florida territory. Panthers get it back. And up on the rush is Gilbert. His shot swings wide. Boys behind the net has it. Trying to come out in front. He does. And that one's whistled wide. Barkov. Brody taking the 18-year-old to the boards. Colborn has it right out in the middle for Butler. Under the stick of Lance Boma. Jones after the puck for Calgary. And David Jones has it back to the point. Speed shot just misses. Campbell slowing things down for Florida, but can't get it out. Kept in by Shane O'Brien. Backman tipping it ahead. Jones protecting the puck. Gives it back to Michael Backlund. That one's intercepted. Backlund swipes at it. Fleischman has it. And he flips it down the ice for Florida. Race for it. Schmied's back. And it's an icing call. They gain control in the offensive zone. I can't get that puck towards the net until Yuri Hoodler does a good job to walk out from behind the net. Tries to get to the front and just missed the rookie, Sean Monaghan. Campbell coming over. Can't get it by Weidman, but second effort. He'll dump it to the Flames blue line. Chris Butler back to get it. This is the fifth game in a five-game Western Conference road swing for Florida. They go back home after this. Stops in Minnesota as well. Colorado, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. Just in time to catch all this nice weather up here. That one's the first shot of the game. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Bob Hartley talking about the deal yesterday that sent Tim Jackman to the Anaheim Ducks. Was it a move to make room for Blair Jones specifically? No, it was, room to, it was a deal to make room for a player. Blair Jones is here because of the reward. He's played well down in Abbotsford. He deserved to be rewarded. And that one's into the glove of Thomas. He'll hang on for another face-off. And that was one of the moves I think you hate to make, uh, especially the way, uh, the way Tim Jackman only represented himself. He represented the community, and he represented the jersey, and uh, he came into camp the last couple of years in the best shape we've ever seen him come in into shape, and it was just a matter of, of numbers game to the point where uh, you try to replace uh, players, and if you give an opportunity for a player to move on, you give him that advantage. Gomez playing it ahead to Bergenheim. Neither player in the game in Edmonton last night. And then that shot gobbled up by the glove of Reto Berra. And we talk about reward, Charlie. Blair Jones comes up. Now, he was up earlier this season, got sent back down, and you can take a look at it. He's really ripped it up. And that's the first thing management and coaches will look at. How does a veteran player react once he gets sent down? Does he sit around and mope and complain and say, well, woe is me? Or does he go out and do exactly what Blair Jones did? He led every department offensively for his team in Abbotsford except for goals, and he was only one away from leading that, too. Six in the American Hockey League in scoring. As he was recalled from a very, very hot Abbotsford Heat team, top record in the whole American Hockey League. Barch tipping it in off the glass. Shane O'Brien back to get it. Jones flips it out. The Branson is there. Branson relieving pressure. Hits Mike Civic with the punt. I think Mike Civic won't like that too much. Hit him high up in the numbers, and when you hit him in the numbers, that's about six foot six off the ice. Here's Ladislav Schmid, third in the National Hockey League with defensemen and hits with 68 on the season. Rat can't handle the pass. Russell with it. He'll flip it back to Jones. So Jones skating with Backlund and McGrath to start. Backlund trying to turn the puck over. Gilroy with it. He's tipped in by Barkov. Back to pick it up is Brody. Behind the play, Gilroy and Jones are tied up. And Blair Jones has the puck. Backlund hustling to catch up. Jones across the line. His pass intercepted. Flames able to keep it in. This is Russell. 
shoots, goes off the leg, and back out to center comes T.J. Brody. Again, hustle in the offensive zone are creating a lot of turnovers for the Flames. Uh, now they just have to find that shooting scene towards Tim Thomas. Huberto with the puck, drops it back. Gilbert goes wide, shoots in traffic, goes off the leg. Camilleri trying to tip it by Brian Campbell. And now Brody has it, or pardon me, Russell has it. Looking for Brody, he finds it. And Brody up the middle to Matt Stajan. Gains the line. Crosses with Stepniak. They lose the puck, and here comes Huberto. Rookie of the year last season in the NHL. His shot up into the body of Barra, and he freezes it. No score. Calgary and Florida here in the first period. Let's tell us Flames hockey. A lot of talk about a year ago about how good the 2013 NHL entry draft could be, and you take a look at the, these picks, six players from the first 10 selected are still in the National Hockey League as we sit, and we've got two of them in this game, and Monaghan and Barkov. Barkov, second overall pick into Florida. It's great to see all this young talent, uh, the development through, uh, whether it coming through the college hockey route or through major junior hockey in Canada, but you, you know they're doing something right now when you right now when you have that depth and these players at such a young age are able to make the NHL. Barkov playing in the Finnish Elite League last year with former flame Ville Niemann is his line mate. Bulma gaining the line, knocked down, following up, Jones shot goes wide. Comes back to Schmid. Shoots goes really wide into the corner, picked up. Branson ahead. Bergenheim. With Gomez, Scott Gomez, the veteran, holds up, hard pass, looking there for Gotch. Jones bounces off him, Gotch still with it. Shane O'Brien, and a penalty coming up to Shane O'Brien as he knocked down Bergenheim in the corner. Here is the basket of half-eaten zucchini sticks from the win known as Money Monday. Pick your winners today with Pools. Very delayed call here by the referee, uh, Dennis LaRue, but yes, uh, O'Brien getting aggressive with that stick, trying to chop at that puck. He barks a few orders at the referee, and, and it was one of those calls, well, LaRue was going, should I call it or shouldn't I call it? it, it you know what he's trying to do. He's not trying to trip, but again, when you take the feet out from underneath the player, he has the puck, and he's in the offensive zone. Staging out with Stepniak, both players with two shorthanded points on the season. And the Panthers will bring it back across the line. Upshaw to Boys. Rimmed around by Barkov. Gilbert. His shot. Blocked. Stajan fighting for it. Gets a little help from Chris Butler, and that one's dumped the length of the ice. Aggressive uh, power play, or penalty killing by the Flames, uh, and communicating is such an important part, uh, especially between the forwards and the defensemen. Mike Camilleri, nice active stick in the neutral zone, taking it away from Huberdeau. And Gilbert hits the red line. He'll pound it in. Weidman has it. Flips it ahead for Calgary too far for Michael Backlund and Camilleri. So they'll head off. So the number one priority for Weidman there. He knew he had to get it out uh, to get it out. And if someone else is able to catch it through the neutral ice zone, fine. But what it does is just relieves the pressure and get some fresh penalty killers out there. Weidman can't get it away. Now a chance. Kulikov wide. Gilroy at the point. Hard pass to Huberto. He knocks it over to Fleischman, and the Panthers still have it. Gilroy, 35 seconds to go in the power play. Kulikov, the pressure from Jones, pops up the puck. Calgary get it and dump it down the ice. Blair Jones has come to play tonight. Very aggressive, uh, whether it's with the body or with the stick, too, getting uh, things happen. And that's that energy you want to see as the player gets called up. And it's not like he's a rookie getting called up, so he knows what it takes to play here in the National Hockey League. Chris Butler bumping down in the corner. Upshaw comes up with it, but he can't get it by Stepniak. And Calgary break out. Shen O'Brien steps back out on the ice. As a shot there from Stepniak, turned away by Thomas. Calgary's killed off both the Florida's power plays here in the first period. We're just past the midway point. Barkov finds Gomez, drops it in the slot. Nobody home. Monahan finds it. And now Yuri Hoodler enters this game for the first time this season below a point a game. 
is 21 points in 22 games coming into action tonight, does Yuri Hoodler. Who's Gotch? Gaining the line. Goes off his stick. Boys looking for it. Russell off the boards. Gotch intercepts it. Back to Boyce, coming up into the middle, and Berchi, the right place, right time. And the Flames are ahead. Monaghan, across the line, finds Hoodler. Yuri Hoodler hooks back to the blue line, plays it off the boards, but sitting on it was Gabranson. And a quick pass ahead. Chris Barch into Calgary territory, holds up. That's a little help. Off the bench, Jimmy Hayes, back to the point, Gilbert. To Campbell, back to Gilbert, looking for a lane, misfires, and Jones is there. Quickly to Boma. Boma trying to get it back to David Jones. This one rolls to the net. Colburn couldn't find it. Now he has it. Hard pass back to Butler. Butler shoots. That one goes off Boma's ankle. And right back to Hayes. Now Matthias charging ahead for Florida. Shot stopped by Barra. And Weidman sneaks in behind his net miner. Jones couldn't come up with it. Matthias does, but David Jones knocking it ahead for Calgary. Lots of active sticks uh, helping the Flames uh, try to slow down the, the, the Panthers as they're trying to get their game going offensively, but not a lot of traffic and pucks at the net. Blair Jones. Gives it to Chris Russell. He has to do a little fancy footwork to get it out. Looks back to Jones. Tip it ahead, Brian McGrath knocks it out of the air. Now Backlund will get it deep. 39-year-old Tim Thomas out to play it. Two-time Vesna Trophy winner with Boston. Talking earlier this week that, yeah, I'm interested in perhaps being a part of the equation for Team USA at the Olympics. Backlund holds it up in the middle. McGrath hacks at it, but goes off a stick. And out of play. No score. Calgary and Florida. Big Earn trying to change that. Jealous presents hashtag score with optic. Share your favorite photo on Instagram or Twitter. Hashtag score with optic. You have a chance to win an optic TV and Samsung prize pack valued at $12,000. Or four tickets to an upcoming Flames home game. Visit telus.com slash hockey for details and to view entries. 13 minutes and 5 seconds into the first period. Calgary with 3 shots. Florida with 2. The Panthers already 0 for 2 on the power play. So close to the vest. A lot of block shots. A lot of sticks in lanes. Staging to draw with Gotch. And Gotch wins it. Expect Gotch to be a huge part of Team Germany at the Olympics. He's twice played for Germany. Been a captain back in Vancouver in 2010. Always, always tough for teams like that, countries like that to compete. But I tell you what, you don't uh, take away any of the heart and the desire of these guys to, to play in the Olympics and represent their country. Russell hits the red line, plays it in. Campbell back to get it. Gilbert out there. You've seen a lot of the Gilbert-Campbell combination on the back end for the Panthers. That one back into the mesh. Charlie, you look at the roster of the Florida Panthers. They've got the young guys that we've been talking about, but what they don't have is much middle ground. Five players under the age of 23, and then it seems like most of the team's over 30. Unfortunately for a team like uh, Florida, a lot of it was they had ownership problems in the summer. They couldn't make any deals, so they lost out on that prime age between 23 and 30 where the guys have a lot of experience. They have a lot of poise that can play in the NHL and help out these younger players. And uh, so, the, yes, they ended up with a lot of older veteran players who are doing the best they can, especially on the defense position. Here's Barkov dropping it for Gilroy. Can't handle it. Brody can. DJ Brody ahead. Monaghan will get it out to center. Monaghan trying to get it to Berchi. Snuck in behind the defenseman, but Gilroy cut it off. Nice defensive play. Trouble off the end boards for Calgary, and Berchi will get it out. Played right back in by Florida. And Bob Hartley predicted this. He thought he would see a similar game plan employed by Columbus, employed by Florida here tonight. Clogging up the neutral zone. And why wouldn't you? You're at the end of a long road trip, the second game of back-to-back -back, uh, games. And if you have the players that will play that style of hockey, then you have to go with that game plan. Matthias has it for Florida. Along the wall, trying to play it out in front. Blocked by Weidman. 
ties up Matthias. Puck comes free. Butler's over for it. Pass too hard for Colborn. Butler gets it back. Side of the net. Comes out in front and Reto Berra jumps on it. No score here in the first period. It's Tellus Flames hockey. Rob, what'd you expect? Ladislav Smeed coming down from in. What kind of player are you going to get? Exactly what we're going to see right here. He's played five games, 16 hits. You expect that. Uh, 12 block shots. Ice time, 18:30, and has brought a little bit of an edge to the to the game, especially defensively in front of the in front of the goaltending. No matter who's in there, whether it's Barra uh, or Rammel, he's got that little bit of edge, and he just wants to play tough-nosed hockey. Giving the Flames some size in the back end, which they so desperately wanted. And Barra with another save. Just a, a thought on Schmid. It was not the first time he has been traded in the National Hockey League. Remember, as we take a look back at this opportunity for the Panthers. Face-off won by the Panthers. They were able to regroup very quickly. They moved around the, the horn, and then they were able to get it back out to Bukestad to make that slot, shot from the slot. A big save by Barra. And that's just the third shot on net uh, for the Panthers. They score! Gilbert shot from the blue line, skipped between the legs of Barra, and the Panthers grab a 1-0 lead. Little tiny thing, so important in a game, and that includes face-offs. Uh, both these teams struggling to score goals early in the first period. A big break here for Florida. Seeing eye puck as Gilbert lets it go. It's skipped and slid a little bit, but there's a screen set up in front as Weidman lifted his leg right at the last second. And unfortunately for Hareta Berra, he couldn't pick it up quick enough to get those pads closed. Tom Gilbert's first goal is a member of the Florida Panthers. And they get that important early lead in a hockey game. It's just the seventh time this season that the Florida Panthers have scored first in the game. And Calgary struggling giving up that first goal. They did it against Columbus on Wednesday in that 2-1 overtime loss. We'll see how the Flames respond. Amoeri can't knock it down. Bergenheim, as we mentioned, Ladislav Schmid out there. Stepniak has it up to Camilleri. Flipped ahead, now Matt Stajan. He's worked over by Gabranson. Dodge comes in to add some support for Florida. 1-0, the Panthers lead. Tom Gilbert, his first of the season. Just the 11th first period goal scored by the Florida Panthers this season. As Barkov weaves his way through the neutral zone, gets a little help. And here's the goal scorer, Gilbert. Nick Bukestad gets the lone assist on that Gilbert goal. So that's where we sit, 1-0 Florida. And another penalty coming up to Calgary as Upshaw is sent headfirst into the boards. Thomas heads off for the extra attacker. Campbell with it. Back to Gilbert. Shoots. That one's blocked by Blair Jones. Blair off the bench is Huberdeau. He has the puck. And the Flames touch it. And it will be Florida going to the man advantage. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. Florida with a little bit of life after this uh, goal was scored and that sets up they're calling this a boarding call on TJ Brody and uh, unfortunately for that call Florida will get their third opportunity on the power play Panthers are 2 for 22 in their last six games 0 for 2 in this hockey game they were 0 for 5 last night in, Ed in Edmonton but a critical juncture, one might say, for the Flames, who've just given up the first goal and now have to go to the penalty kill. That stage and thrown out of the draw. Lance Boma will come in to face off with Bukestad. Campbell. Huberto. Huberto hooks it back to Campbell. Campbell to Kulikov. Dmitry Kulikov finds Brian Campbell, middle of the blue line. Looking for a lane. Has it. That one just whistled wide. Now Campbell in, shoots, and missed the net. And the puck caught up in the mesh. Now the Flames do have to be a little wary, Charlie, when it comes to the Panthers. You look at their power play stats, and they're 
you know, very impressive, but they've been very good in back-to-back -back games with a man advantage. This will be the uh, fifth uh, set of back-to-back -back games, 2-1-1. One, and one. Power play at 27.8%, uh, only 4.9% the rest of the game. So, yes, that's a long ways to come, but uh, they seem to be very focused when they get into the second game of back-to-back -back situations. And another face-off is going to come back out in the neutral zone. And not to build a federal case for Peter Horacek's team, but they are 30th in the league with the man advantage this year, operating under 10%. Well, we saw the numbers uh, for the interim coach and his team, and that's a tough, if you don't get off to a good start on a power play, you're really set up for the rest of the year not having good numbers. So you just have to plug away and just eat away at that percentage and try to make your power play better. Gilbert back to get it. It's Barkov with a pass, but Weidman takes that away for Calgary. One minute to go in a man advantage. The third power play of the first period for the Panthers. Upshaw flips it ahead. Barkov has a couple of flames on him. Still with the puck, though, as he gets to Boys. Another chance for Brad Boys to Barkov. Upshaw moves away back to the slot. Puck comes to the point. This is Campbell. Now Boys. A lot of room as Weidman chases him to the corner. Upshaw to Campbell. 30 seconds to go in the power play for Florida. Schultz trying to come around and take the shot. Camilleri has the puck. Thank you very much, he says, as he fires it down the ice. Great job. Uh, Flames keeping that box intact and forcing all the plays to the perimeter and taking away that point shot. I think the Panthers would like to get Campbell or Gilbert to try and get that point shot to start power plays. They can't get it going. T.J. Brody set to come back out on the ice. And the Flames now three for three killing penalties here in this hockey game. Fleischman to Bukestad, into the glove of Berry, drops it, rebound. Huberto couldn't beat Reto Berra. And Matt Stajan, not a lot of help as it's touched. And the whistle goes, faceoff will come back in the neutral zone on an offside. Great to see these young players. We missed uh, Huberto all last year because of the uh, shortened season. Called for trophy winning winger. Good hands getting through the middle and then jumping on rebounds. So when you see young players like that, he's, he's a slight player. He's not a huge player, but he's not afraid to get to those traffic areas. And those are the rebounds are going to occur. And with those soft hands of his, he can make a lot of damage. Calgary down by one. Less than a minute to go here in the first period. Brody after it in his own end. Dodge tied up with Brody. Puck comes back to the point, kept in by Kulikov. Waiting for it is Hoodler. Now some room. 30 seconds to go. He's going to slip in behind his netminder. Now he gives it to Brody. Head to Colborn. And this one's drifted in. Thomas will set it up. Shots are 6-3 in favor of Florida. Perhaps not surprising considering they've had three power plays. But the Flames looking for a better start than they got here in the first. Camilleri flipping it to the line. Stepniak can't handle it. That one bounces off Camilleri Colborn with it, and that will do it. It's 1-0 Florida after the first period. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Well, Gilbert gets his first of the season. Certainly Darren Millard, not the start the Flames were looking for. Panthers will be pretty happy with it. Welcome back to Calgary. 20 minutes have come and gone. The Florida Panthers with the only goal of the hockey game so far. They lead it 1-0. Now we welcome in Calgary's Sun columnist and our Flames analyst, Eric Francis. Three shots on goal. Back-to-back -back games for first periods, not so good. What are your thoughts? they got to be better. I mean, these fans deserve more. Three shots on goal is embarrassing. This is a Florida Panthers team that has played. This is their fifth game in eight nights, all on the road. They are dog tired. They played last night in Edmonton. This is a team you should be pouncing on right from the outset. Instead, they're letting the Panthers dictate play. It makes no sense at all. Bob Hartley can't be happy with them at all. 
And when you think about some of the things they're doing, you got almost a comedy of errors. Sometimes when they're trying to gain the zone, they're having no luck with that whatsoever. Most of their attempts at shots or shots are from the periphery. There's one there. And then, you know, you've got other plays where a rebound here is given up, and no one seems to really be pouncing on. Just the intensity's not there. And fans can understand if this team's going to lose all year long with regularity, but what they can't forgive is a lack of effort. And we're not seeing the intensity tonight that I think you should show when you're at home. Second period coming up, and hopefully they can find that intensity for their own good. Now, Sean Monaghan, the kid who had a great start, and then he kind of fell off a little bit. Where do you see Sean's game right now? You know, I think that he's been largely invisible the last five games, and that's understandable. He's settling yep. down, and you knew that there was going to be a leveling off. We like the upside of him. Everybody's excited about him moving forward. I like him a little better tonight. He's being a little more assertive. Unlike most of the team, he's been involved in a lot more plays. There's a great example of the kind of play that he would have buried earlier in the year. He always seemed to get those breaks and finish those plays. Didn't get a chance tonight, but he's just making more things happen. Now, here's an interesting stat. That's his first penalty as an NHLer. He scored eight goals in the NHL before he got his first penalty. I'm not sure many players could say that in their career. It took a while. We'll see what second period holds in store. Rob? Go to the second. Let's take a look back at the first period scoring summary brought to you by Future Shop for the season's hottest gadgets at the best price guaranteed. Head to futureshop.ca. Season's greetings from Future Shop. Just the one goal. Tom Gilbert hits his first of the year. Great face-off by Bukestad. Nick Bukestad gets it back to the point. A seeing eye shot that beat the Retta Berra between the pads. Shot 6-3, as Charlie mentioned, and we heard a little from Eric Francis about intensity, and you wonder about how much confidence is involved in that. The Flames winless in their last six games at home, not playing very confidently at this point. Camilleri, blockered away by Thomas. Boys has it, he'll flip it, but he gets it out. Russell, Stemiak, and it's tipped in by Camilleri. Gilbert, first man on it. Boys picks it up, looking for Huberto. The pass is by him and TJ Brody back in his own end to get it. A little too hard for Russell. It squirts free and staging in the right place. Here's TJ Brody. Gains the line. To the backhand, into the glove of Thomas, and he will hold on to that. Shot going wide. Uh little bit on the backhand with the defense trying to jump up into the play and trying to break that defensive coverage of the, the Florida Panthers. So Thomas, pretty simple save there. But with the Flames, when they start playing well, they get the four check going. They get the puck in deep. They, they start banging bodies. Just uh, eight hits total in that first period. But again, you look at the six minutes you take off the board. Uh, because the penalty kill, that can really take away some momentum. And Bob Hartley beginning the second period, juggling the line of Monaghan, Hoodler, now Blair Jones out there instead of Berchi. Huberto shoots, goes off a stick. Jones taken to the boards by Bukestad. Now Huberto in the slot, behind the back pass, finds Fleischman, and he plays it through the top of the crease. Panthers can't keep it in. Kulikov to Gabranson. Kulikov cuts across the red line, finds Bukestad, shoots, goes off a stick. First man to it, Fleischman. Huberto to Fleischman. That one goes over top of the net off the glass. Jones coming in and hitting a body. Monahan with it. Blair Jones gets to it, but can't get by Sasha Gotch. Pardon me, Marcel Gotch. Sasha would be his brother. One time member of the Tampa Bay Lightning and that one's dumped down the ice and an icing call for Florida coming back into the Calgary end. We talked about Marcel Gotch. Good serviceable player really would fit in well with the system uh, that uh, head coach Peter Horacek has. You can see the faceoffs won this year. 54%. It's a nice number. You know, you're starting with the puck at least half the time you, you start facing off. Colburn trying to play it ahead to Lance Bomba. He was knocked down at the blue line. For the Panthers, it's a lot uh, easier to play this system now. They just have to play their to fight defensive uh, position. Colburn tries to get it up the boards. There's the contact right at the blue line. It had sent down Lance Bomba. 
Off the draw, Barra, kick save. Dodge for Gomez. Colborn taking it away from Scott Gomez. But they can't get it out. Flames hemmed in. Shane O'Brien off the wall. Jones trying to poke it forward to Boma. Let's turn back. And Scott Gomez will go on the attack. Into the middle. That one tipped just wide. Hayes got a stick on it. It looked like he beat Barra, but missed the outside of the post. Barch takes a hit from Jones. Jones cuts to the middle. It'll help with Berchi coming off the bench, but it comes to Russell. Shoots Thomas. Square to the play, makes the save. All set up by a big hit uh, by David Jones. Uh, and to get a little bit more room in that offensive zone. Jones had a season-high eight hits Wednesday night against Columbus. Starting to use his size and weight. There's McGratton after it. Backlund in there, too. Puck comes free. Berchi couldn't reach it. And the Florida Panthers have it. Chris Barch will jump it in. Brody back, leaves it. Berchi is there. Puck taken away. Barkov gets it back. Barkov shoots, and that one goes up over top of the net into the mesh, and a faceoff coming up at the Calgary end. Two NFL games of note on Sunday on Sportsnet and City at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. An NFC East matchup, the Dallas Cowboys and the resurgent New York Giants, winners of four in a row, and the AFC South leaders, the Indianapolis Colts, head to the desert to take on the surprising Arizona Cardinals. David Jones uh, with a good, solid uh, four-checking hit on Bart. Walked to the front of the net, just lost control of it at the last second, but it was able to set up that opportunity to get some excitement going with the big hit. Schmid over to Butler. Stepniak waiting for it. Finds Camilleri at center. He'll backhand it in. Brian Campbell picks it up, gets it away from Stepniak onto the stick of Gilbert. Upshaw to center. He plays it in. Barkov after it, but Butler gets in his way. Schmid tipping it away from Upshaw, but it's on the stick of Barkov. Upshaw. That one taken away by Camilleri. Has Stajan cutting up one side, stepping at the other. The pass by Stajan, and the Flames will make a line change. Bukestad into Calgary territory, cuts to the middle, and a big collision there, Russell and Fleischman. And Fleischman takes the worst of that. Bukestad turns, and he's pushed off the puck by Russell. Fleischman with it. Into the middle. Blocked. Russell, Barra, one save on Bukestad as Huberto is there. The puck back to the point. Kulikov kept in by Fleischman. Bukestad, cross-ice pass to Branson, and that one's knocked down by Barra. Fleischman at the side of the net, comes up top, Kulikov over, and that one tipped away by Weidman as Bukestad setting up for the shot. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. I'd like to remind you, Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's game is Sunripe Juice Blend from Concentrate. Bob Hartley looking on. You'd like to know who was the person that said that Florida was a tired hockey team. They're really skating well here tonight. Holborn hits the red line. We'll rim it around the boards. Jones tried to get it deeper. Calgary gets it back, goes to the point. Kept in momentarily by Butler. Now it's intercepted. Bergenheim to Gotch. Drops for Gomez, back to Gotch, shoots off the post. Gotch up top, move to Gomez who's back at the point. And Scott Gomez sneaks in, finds Mondo. That one goes wide, and O'Brien has it, nor does he. Red O'Bara trapped in behind the net, helping out his defenseman. Holborn plays it to the corner, kicking it in is Campbell. Calgary just not finding the right page at this point. These things seem just a little off defensively and offensively. And that's the intensity and the, the mental part of the game that the, they have to get stronger on in games like this. The, the Flames just not as sharp with the passing that you need to be. 
Russell hustles in. Auto behind the net has a couple of players converge on him. Backlund, McGratton has it. Brian McGratton walks out. That one's turned away. Brody behind the net. As Russell sneaks in from the point. Brody will do the same. Now the Flames to do the your fans, I should say, going to do their part for the Flames is they become very vocal. Ackland chipping it ahead. McGratton close quarters with Fairchie and Campbell, but it's Campbell who gets the puck. Upshaw flips it through the air. Bounces right to Ladislav Schmid. Shots 9-6 in favor of Florida. They lead 1-0. Tom Gilbert, a first period goal. The only one so far. Barkov. Couldn't get by T.J. Brody. Broke his stick. He'll head off. Brody has it. I believe we're seeing some new blue line combinations from Bob Hartley, too. Step in. Holds up on Gabranson looking for Camilleri. The pass wasn't clean. Panthers have it, and they're on the attack. Barkov to Boys. Boys shoots, and it was blocked by Butler. Gabranson comes over. Tries to get it deep. Camilleri was there. He'll give it to Russell. Stepniak, back to Russell, knocked out of the air by Kulikov, and Boys with it. Shot by Bukestad up high on Barra, part of the arm. This one played to the Florida bench. Calgary looking for a too many men call. They're not going to get one, no icing. Jones over the boards, he'll chase it. That's Blair Jones. And Red O'Bara now forced to come out of the net. Brody. Couldn't find a target. Hubert always there for the Panthers. Bukestad tied up. Weidman off the glass. This one bounces to Campbell. Caught up in his feet, but he manages to keep it at the red line. And as Weidman follows up, shoots, and that one's over top of the net. Jones tying up Huberto. Monahan. Poodler. Monahan has it. He'll chop it along the boards. Campbell trying to take it away from Blair Jones. He does. Weidman holds it momentarily in at the line, and it's back now to Ladislav Schmid. Getting a little bit more intensity here from the Flames the last couple shifts, but they've got to find some way to generate uh, some traffic towards the front of the net. Tim Thomas just facing 10 shots so far here tonight. Otto has Lance Boma on top of him. Jones, that's David Jones to Colburn, and he scores! Joe Colburn, second goal in as many games in Calgary with life. Exactly what we talked near the end of the first period. How they have to get that puck in and get that four check going in. It was good hard work by Lance Boma and uh, David Jones right here driving in, creating a turnover. First it's Lance Boma, then it's Jones, and a quick snapshot. As the safety man in this case was Joe Colbert, the centerman in the high slot, is able to walk right into this one. A quick release through a screen, and Tim Thomas didn't see it until it was by him. David Jones with the Good forecheck, turning the puck over. Some assist to Boma as well. So the goal, Colburn is third from David Jones and Lance Boma. And Calgary have tied it at one. Thomas gives it away. Goldhorn has it behind the net. Knocked down in the corner by Gilroy. Gotch. Manages it up to Fergenheim. He'll dump it in. He's going to go try and retrieve it. Schmid has other plans. O'Brien hard off the boards. No icing as Gilroy, twice a member of the New York Rangers, back to get it. And play it over to Mike Motto. Russell back in his own end. Here's Brody with it. See if that goal gives the Flames a little more life. Backlund now charges down the boards. Backlund looking for the defenseman Russell, but it's tipped away by Matthias. And all the way back in his own end is Brody. Sven Berchi is Matthias and a penalty coming up. And the Flames have control, so it's going to go against the Panthers. It looked like Math Matthias had got the stick up. But Calgary back in it and look like they're going to the power play. They've evened it thanks to Joe Colborn, his third of the year.
See tomorrow's stars today with the Calgary Hitmen take on the Everett Silvertips at Scotiabank Saddle Dome tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Visit hitmanhockey.com for tickets or call 403-777-4646. Strange turn of events for Sean Mathias. He thought he was going to draw a penalty. Right here, he's getting called for a hooking. Brody unhappy with that. Threw a little shoulder right back into the jaw, Mathias. He thought that was going to be the penalty. But the down ice referee made the call. Hooking frames on their first power play. First well, power four and a half period. Yeah, they haven't had one since overtime Monday in Winnipeg. Second time this season the Flames played a game without a power play. It's, they didn't get one against Columbus. They get one here against Florida, having just tied the game. Great opportunity to take control. Amalari dumping it into the corner. Get it to Hoodler. He goes back to the point. Camilleri scrambles. He's got it. Camilleri. Down low. Comes up to Hoodler. Stepniak parked in front of Thomas. Russell with it. Hoodler has it. Tom Monahan's in the slot. Four forwards for Calgary. Hoodler to Stepniak. Bounces back to the point. Gary Hoodler shoots up high. Thomas grabs that one. Great movement once the Flames had possession in the offensive zone. As you expect, pretty good push here by uh, the Panthers. Uh, there is a nice, maybe patented cross ice pass, but right there, Lee Stepniak normally stands right in front of the goaltender. I thought he was uh, anticipating a pass right here. He's stepping back to look for a redirect, but with Tim Thomas seeing that shot all the way, he's going to stop that. Panthers gave up two power play goals to Edmonton on five opportunities. They come into this game with the 23rd ranked penalty kill in the NHL. Over in the goal score. Get it back to the point. Bukestad intercepts that. And now a race. Fleischman with Weidman watching him. Fleischman taken to the boards. Brody. Gonna give it right back to Dennis Weidman. 2010-2011, Dennis Weidman played briefly for Florida, 61 games, had 33 points before being traded to Washington at the trade deadline. Goldmore back to Weidman. Quickly to Brody. 25 seconds to go in the penalty. Berchi. Down below the goal line to Colbert. Now Berchi will get it back and go to the point with it. He has to hurry to it. Back to Berchi. Over to White. Brody shoots. Thomas save. Score! Stan Berchi. You got to love when you shoot the puck in today's game. And that's what you have to do on power plays. The Flames finally get the position they want with the. Brody right in the center of the ice right here broken play broken play you set it up you walk the line a little quick give and go here comes Sven Berchi back to Weidman over to Brody there's the setup Joe Colborne's set up the run so all Tim Thomas can do is just hope to stop that puck and that sets up the rebound which he bounces straight to Sven Berchi as he walks in from his off wing position and puts in the power play goal so Berchi with his second of the season and Calgary now with their first lead in this hockey game. Schmid flips it up through the air. And lands in front of Campbell, but Jones is there. To get away from Lance Boma. Schmid in adding some pressure, knocking down Gotch. But the puck comes all the way back down to the Calgary end. Shane O'Brien with it. Schmid finding Jones. Across the line to the middle, looking for Michael Backlund. He'll come up with a Campbell's pass by Bergenheim all the way back down into Calgary territory. And this will be an icing call. Little change of momentum here uh, for the Calgary Plains. So little tiny things make things happen here. First getting control of the puck. And then Joel Colborn is a big key right there. Big man standing in front. And as you can see, Thomas just looks as big as he can at that point. He wants an interference call there. But that was good positioning by Colborn. He was not in the crease. He held his position and basically didn't allow uh, Tim Thomas to come out any further than he wants to. 
Two goals, three minutes and four seconds apart here in the second period in Calgary with a lead. Brody to Russell, shoots, and Thomas will gather that one in and hang on for another faceoff. Calgary battling back in the second as Ben Berchi gets his second of the season. Sportsnet U is your home on Saturday for the TELUS Vanier Cup, crowning the champion of Canadian college football. The Calgary Dinos take on Laval Rouge Or at 10.30 a.m. Mountain this, uh, tomorrow morning on Sportsnet West, Pacific East, Ontario, and 360. Well, Joe Colbert's third of the year gives us a winner on behalf of Safeway Score and Win Contest and Sunripe Juice Blend from Concentrate. Kara Inman of Lethbridge has won a DVD prize pack from E1. As the Flames now leading 2-1, out shooting Florida 11-10 in the hockey game. And they've had eight shots already on Tim Thomas here in the second period. So a nice response from Bob Hartley's club after a sluggish start. Maybe they just need Eric Francis to get after him. Two or three times between periods. <laughs> well, boys with it in all alone, and a nice play coming back by guess who? Chris Russell, and he takes away an opportunity from Boys. He was thinking, well, I shouldn't have been stick handling in the low slot area with the puck and lose it, and uh, I better get back and help out. Kind <laughs> yeah. of scenario. Yeah, well, that's that's pretty good thinking, I would think. Well, that's the quickness that we've uh, grown to to see here from Chris Russell, both offensively and, as we saw there, defensively. Now, Russell around the boards. Gilroy managing to keep it in for Florida. Just over six minutes to go here in the second period. Hayes gives it up. Russell. Oh, that one bounces up high on Gilroy. Unable to keep it in. Looks like he's okay. I think it might have caught him in the chin area. Play back in. Jimmy Hayes after it. Bounces off. Russell Brody is there. Boodler tried to chip it out. It didn't work. Stage and following up. Manages to get it out. Boodler has it across center. Flames leading score. Loses the puck. And a penalty coming. It's a slashing call. And it looks like Calgary's going back to the power play. Up by one here in the second. Sven Berchi's second of the season gives us our next score and win winner, courtesy of Safeway and Sunripe Juice Blend from Concentrate. Suma Matthew of Calgary has won a Garmin Nuvi 2597 LMT GPS. As Berchi didn't need a GPS to find the back of the net, and the Flames back out on the power play. Jimmy Hayes, two minutes for slashing, right there across the hands of uh, Gary Hoodler, lost control of it momentarily. And Flames will take advantage, try to take advantage of this power play opportunity. Gilbert stepping in front of a Camilleri pass, and he'll play it down the ice. Berchi's power play goal came very late in the power play, Charlie. Took full advantage of the full two minutes. A couple lines out there, a couple opportunities. Russell has it knocked off his stick, and Campbell will dump it back down. These are the types of games, and we know how many games, and we've been in how many games the Flames are playing in one goal games that you have to start taking advantage of situations like this on the power play. Not deep. Gilbert gets to it, but a couple of Flames on him right away. Monaghan to Stepniak back to the point, and Weidman will keep it in to Camilleri. Up to Weidman. Throws it to the empty corner. Behind the net. Gilbert has it taken away by Monaghan. Camilleri gets it to Hoodler. Weidman shoots, misses, side of the net. It comes free and it's poked by Camilleri. And Matthias into Calgary territory. Shot stopped by Vera, picked up by Monaghan. 45 seconds to go in the penalty to Jimmy Hayes of the Panthers. Shots are 11 apiece, but Calgary scoring twice here in the second to take the lead. Tipped wide. Jones back to Camilleri, remains out at the point. Colburn gets it back to Camilleri, trying to get it off the boards. He does. Widen. Back to Camilleri. And Camilleri. Widen. Shoots. That one's blocked. And Weidman knocks it down. Berchi into the glove of Thomas. All the veteran came right out to the bottom of the circle to take it away from Sven Berchi. This 
perfectly preserved uniform came to us via a generous donation from our champion's wife. Pick your winners today with pools. Uh, like the confidence of this young player getting better and better. He knew that Thomas was across it quick enough and he just a slight fake slap shot and then he waited and then he tried to go up over the shoulder but you mentioned Thomas so far out of the net. Russell trying to play it into traffic. Penalized player Hayes back out on the ice. So Calgary one for two in this game with the power play. Kulikov trying to find Hayes but the pass tipped away. Around the boards, coming over to pick it up. Boma can't get it by Gotch. Russell under pressure, manages to get it ahead. And Jones, that's Blair Jones, up to Lance Boma. Takes a hit. Gabranson finishing the check. Boma looks a little rattled. Sean Bergenai charges across the center line. O'Brien back to get it for Calgary. 30 year old veteran from Port Hope, BC, falls in the corner. Puck comes back to Ladislav Schmid. It's Camilleri. Faked it, but Gilbert wasn't buying it. Right now the puck stuck along the boards either side, and Calgary in. Nearly given away, it is given away. Bukestad using his size, side of the net. Fleischman just missed. Calgary hemmed in their own end. Had a chance to get it out, failed to do so. Fleischman, side of the net, Barrett, big save. This time Blair Jones handles it. He's going to skate it to the neutral zone. Camilleri, funny hop off the glass. Camilleri jumps on it, waiting for some help off the bench. Stajan going to the front of the net, tipped just wide. What a bounce off the glass, favorably for Calgary. Weidman getting it deep. Gilbert, checked by Stajan. Stepniak in there, gets it back to Matt Stage and behind the net, looking in front for Hoodler. That's by him, and here come the Panthers, breaking out, three on two. Huberto to Boys. Barkov going to the net, but Boys electing to shoot and miss. Now behind the net is Buckley. Boys couldn't get a clean pass. Reto Barra has not been busy. Jumped on it, and the faceoff coming up in the Calgary end. He might not be uh, busy, but he came up with a great stave here as Nick Bukestad got a nice feed from behind the net right here. Good hard one-timer, caught that right pad at that. You can see quick movement, good pass, great save, and the Flames are able to take advantage of this puck that bounces off the, off the stanchion. Ooh, so close, Jones could have been offside there as he's going for a line change and then get that puck at the net. Matt Stajan just redirected it just a little bit wide on the far side. Gilbert, who opened the scoring for Florida in the first period, out there with Brian Campbell. Gilbert saw Boma coming, stepped out of the way of the puck. Boma hit him, and he looks a little shook up. It's twice now Lance Boma has looked a little shook up late here in the second period. Matthias to Gilbert. Gilbert kicked away by Barry in the corner. Going over. And Berchi. Four points in his last five games, and that goal by Berchi on the power play, his first goal in 15 games. And in confidence, even with these younger players, you're so important. Uh, you, know, you get it off this movie, you, you know you want to keep yourself in the lineup, and the best way to do it for him is to make points. Goodler. The Berchi shoots, and Thomas made the save. You could see that play coming. Hoodler back to the blue line. Into Butler. Trying to thread the needle. It's cut off, but given right back to Butler. That one's blocked in close quarters by Bergenheim, and Monahan took a swipe at it. Sean Monahan in front. Side of the net. Thomas is there. He scrambles and keeps the puck out. Couldn't cover it, though, and the Panthers have it late here in the second period. They're just going to lift it to the Flames line as Florida dodging a late bullet. Calgary with two goals in the second period. Now lead as we head into the intermission. Darren Millard, a much better effort by the home side. Yeah, the Flames' face-off percentage has improved marginally that frame, but a complete 180 on the scoreboard. Coming up in the second intermission, Nick Kiprios makes his highlight debut, as in he's going to call some. Looking forward to that one. Plus, the evolution of one of the Flames' handful of 
acquisitions, Joel Colbert. That's all coming up next on TELUS Flames Hockey. Ready, buddy? Four. Back in Calgary after two periods of Flames with a nice second stand, just scored a couple of times, and hence they have a 2-1 lead as we get set for period number three. Eric Francis stops by one more time. Joe Colbert gets his second in as many games. That was important, but how it came about was probably even more important for the Flames. Yeah, you know, I think this team is, you know, their identity is going to be as a blue-collar team, especially as they get younger and younger and eventually trade away players like Mike Camilleri. They're going to have to count on more what I would call blue-collar goals. That's what this team's identity is. That's what the coach wants. And I think Colburn's goal is a perfect example of how they should and how they want to score more goals. Lance Boma with great pressure there, starts the heat. David Jones comes up, compounds the problem, and of course, Joe Colburn just scoops in and gets the goal. A nice finish, but I like the way it started even better because it's two guys working very hard to force a turnover. Sven Berchi gets his second of the season, and, and I bet, Eric, that's a pretty big moment for him. He needed it. I think, uh, you know, this is a player that the Flames absolutely need to progress and be a good, big part of their future. And a goal like that gets the monkey off his back. That's the first goal in 15 games and three healthy scratches for him. He's only scored one other goal this year. That was in game number four, and there you see his biggest fan, Brian Burke, cheering him on. He also wants Berchi to win. This is all about tough love. And this kid really responded this period, three shots on goal, and is probably the best player on the ice so far. Four points in his last five games. Certainly a, a good move for Sven Berchi, Rob. Indeed, as we take a look at our scoring summaries, brought to you by Panago Pizza. Before, during, or after the game, get a fresh Panago. Florida on the board first. Tom Gilbert in the first period, has first of the year at 15-14 before Joe Colburn, his third of the year, David Jones. Sven Berchi is second of the year from Colburn and Brody. So some good offensive opportunities uh, for the Flames. They've changed that assist twice now so far. They said it went off of Jones and they said it went off of Colborne. So he was the last guy to touch that puck before Sven Berchi put it in the back of the net. Now we should expect maybe some more fireworks, Charlie. You take a look at the offense that these two teams produce in the third period. Well, we're not done yet, I don't think. Both of them very good in the third period. In fact, offensively, it's the best period uh, for both teams as they have each scored 24 third period goals. see Peter Horacek really has to be happy or impressed with the way his team has played here tonight second game of back-to-back -back games they've had some good hustle well the 18 year old Barkov out to face off with the 29 year old Matt Stajan to get the third period underway Calgary and Florida Flames to win for the first time in seven games at home Florida has won their last two visits here to Calgary Gilbert into the middle. Barkov couldn't get a clean pass back. He gets the puck back momentarily. And he'll get it down low. Boys trying to get it out front. He does. It skips back to Campbell. Let's play behind the net. Russell is there. Gilbert waiting for it. But so is Camilleri. Boys at the blue line. Keeps it in momentarily. But Florida's going to give up that line because they're going to make a line change. And Stajan will tip it in. Calgary's going to follow suit. You mentioned that the last uh, win for the Flames at home, 5-4 in overtime, January 4, 2007. And the fact is they don't play each other very often. Sometimes it was the odd season plus the lockout, but still, that's that's a long time. Up played ahead to Bowman, brought in offside. Shots favoring Calgary, 11-7 in that second period. They have a one-shot edge here to start the third. And I think that's going to be key. David Jones, the big bodies of the Flames, getting in front of Tim Thomas and getting a lot of pucks on the Panthers' netline. Well, and plus on the four check too. Uh, Eric was talking about that with Roger uh, just before we came on here in the third period. You, you, you have to get your feet going. You go, get a good four check going, and part of that four check is a good hit in the corner. Puck flipped up into the Panthers' bench and. Luckily, backup Scott Clementson had that catcher on. He was able to help out. I don't know if he gets credit for that save, but uh, Clementson, another veteran, a goaltender, has not seen a lot of action this year. Just three games, uh, one loss, one overtime loss. 
Panther sent their goalie of the future, Jacob Markstrom, back to the American Hockey League so he could play. So they have 39-year-old Tim Thomas and 20 or 36-year-old Scott Clemenson as their tandem. Got free by Butler. Flipped out to center. And Kulikov with it. And roll it back in. Third period starting a little bit like the first two in the sense that the Panthers with some early pressure. Keeping their feet moving. Now Hoodler. Tied up Gilroy enough so that the Flames can get the puck. And Berchi looking to get it to Monaghan. He has it at the blue line, but Hoodler trapped offside. Now it's played in by Monaghan. And Calgary again will make a line change. Keep it simple. Get the puck in front of you, keep the puck in front of you, keep yourself moving, and then start where on a team that's been on a long extended road trip and back to back nights. Gilroy. As we've got a fight now, Brian McGratton and Chris Barch. McGratton with four fights on the season, Barch with a pair. Brian McGratton unloading with some rights. Barch trying to get his right free. And he gets a good one in on McGratton, but McGratton continues to hammer away. Now he's using the left and the right. And Brian McGratton going right after Barch. These are going to leave some marks on these big boys. Well, there's a headache coming after this one, too. Uh, you can see the defensive position right there by Barch. Brian McGratton. I would say the aggressor and the winner of that. I don't see too many that he's not so far this year <laughs> or any time we've seen him. But he just seems to get his uh, positioning right uh, and get that, that hand and the extension and just the toughness that he has. Intact Insurance is proud to sponsor the Calgary Flames and all the fans who carry a torch for them. Intact Insurance, you're back. Sitting in the box for five minutes for fighting, Chris Barch and Batman Brian McGrath. So, nice way to make a living right cool. there. A little unusual too, don't you think, Charlie, in the sense early in the third period in a close hockey game? Well, it, it, it's something that you look at. Uh, Burns is trying to get his team pumped up, and what better way to get into a big scuffle and hopefully come away a victor. But on the other hand, it can really turn the tide against you. Gilbert to Gomez, trying to tip it towards the net, but Shane O'Brien blocked it off. And a one-handed by Brian Campbell. Now he used both hands and dump it down the ice. And this one's going to come back because it's an icing call. Canadian Pacific Goals for Kids is proudly sponsored by Canadian Pacific and its 2,700 railroaders based in Calgary. For every Flames goal this season, the railway will donate $250 to Kids Sport and the Flames Even Strength Program. Goals by Flames will help CP build stronger kids and stronger communities. Face off in the Calgary end, the man with two points for Calgary, a goal and an assist. Joe Colburn wins the draw. But boys waiting for it. Slav Schmid on the boards, put through the air, down low, it comes right in front of Rhett O'Bara, but the puck never made it through to him. Kulikov, that one's blocked by Colburn's side of the net, and Scotty Upshaw looking for it. Colburn's hurt, shot, stopped by Gabranson, and Barkov couldn't get the rebound, clean. Gabranson, that one's side of the net, hard pass looking for Upshaw, too hard. Up top, Kulikov. Upshaw. He scored in Edmonton last night. Back up top, Gabranson. Upshaw lays it back to Gabranson. Shoots again, blocked. This time by Schmid. That was a very difficult shift for the Calgary Flames. Coburn just finally got off, and now Schmid is still down. So he took that one right off the boot. Coburn looked like he took it up off his arm as it was redirected, but this was a direct hit right to Schmid's ankle. 27-year-old Czech Republic product. So redirect and then caught Coburn up high. He stayed on. They, they tried the battle. He stayed out the whole shift right until the end, and then the shot against Schmid, good hard low shot, and turned that ankle down. Flames were able to clear 
at that zone. Wilborn's down the hallway. Schmid is on the end of the bench. Sacrifice to win. Flames have not shied away from that all year. They've been league leaders in blocks all season long. Staten can't get it out. The bounce to Russell. Chris Russell. That one's tipped in by Camilleri. Stepniak after it. Going to push Motto out of the way. Comes to the front of the net. Now Russell. Shot up high on Thomas. He just shrugs his shoulder. Stepniak. Well, oh, in the net. Gutstad checking him, but the puck comes to Camilleri. Back to Russell. Shot knocked down by Camilleri. Broke his stick. Huberto missed fires. Stajan came over, kept him at bay anyways. The Flames make some changes. Good little push there by the Flames, and that's what they have to do. A little bit more consistent. And the way they can do it is to get that puck deep into the offensive zone, but it's been a tough struggle for them to get up the ice. Thomas directed to the corner. Gilbert is there. Bergenheim didn't play last night in Edmonton. He's in there tonight. Jesse Winchester, Thomas Kopetsky both getting injured in that game against Edmonton. Campbell knocks it out of the air, but Berchi following with the Monaghan. Gomez. He'll play it out. Gotch to the red line. Bumps away from Weidman. Bergenheim following up. But a nice stick by Butler takes the puck away from him. Hoodler can't get it out. Kept in at the line and a fancy play by the rookie Barkov as he went between the legs. And Calgary's rookie, Sven Berchi, across the line. Getting a little help from Michael Backlund. On the backhand, cutting to the net. Kulikov cut him off. Blair Jones has it. Backlund. It's Kulikov. Twisted around, comes in front, he scores! Well, you're scoring in the minor leagues, you might as well score in the National Hockey League. Uh, Michael Backlund makes this happen as he comes through the neutral ice zone, tries to make a little play right here, can't get it at the net, might get away with a little bit of a hook as that puck comes around, they move it around the corner, Right here, he loses control. There's a little hook to get away with it. Lance Bulma finds Jones standing out in front all by himself. And Blair Jones has his first goal since scoring that overtime goal against Anaheim. Just his second goal as a member of the Calgary Flames in his 37th game. But you know what? We'll look at it this way. His first goal of the season in his first game with Calgary. And he scored with some authority, Charlie, did he not? Well, you don't just guide those ones in because of the goaltendings up today, especially Tim Thomas, never going to give up on it. You pound it. Eukstad in deep for Florida. Camilleri flipping it to the line. Gilbert misfires. Oh, and an elbow to the face of Matt Stajan. Officials didn't see it. Gilbert has it, and he'll play it around to Fleischman. Here comes Campbell leading the rush. Across the line, watched by Weidman. Panthers making some changes, so Campbell just buy some time. Gets it to Scotty Upshaw. 30 year old from Fort McMurray to Mathias. Sean Mathias. There's Matt Stajan right in his mug. And the puck comes to Butler. Off the glass. Tipped out. And a chance for Calgary. Two on one. Stajan with Upshaw. Hustling to come back. Stepniak drags. And Kulikov. Nice defensive play to break it up. And a block shot going the other way. Mathias. Breakaway and Barrett gets to it, but an open net for Hayes, he scores! Jimmy Hayes cuts the lead and the Panthers are within one. Just a split indecision by Reto Barra. He got there in time, but he didn't get enough authority on that clearing pass. Hayes with a good job of following up on the play. Comes back to the point, here's the block shot right here. Goes off of Hayes at that point. He starts to play. There's Barrett. Nice little feed there. And unfortunately, Butler cannot play as well between the pipes as the guy with the mask can. And Hayes was able to finish that playoff. So Jimmy Hayes picks up his first goal of the season. His first goal as a member of the Florida Panthers. 
And just a minute and 22 seconds after Calgary went up by two, the Panthers answer back there within one. Florida with the puck deep. Gotch cuts in on Berchi, turns around, and Berchi blocked that one to the boards. Monaghan collides with Kulikov. Now the Panthers, a little momentum in their favor. Shot up high, Barra makes the save, a little trouble with the rebound this time. He gathers it in, and a penalty coming up to Shane O'Brien as he got just a bit too aggressive. So Florida will go to the man advantage down by one. Calgary leading the Panthers in a wild third period. A complete review on the radio of every Calgary Flames game can be heard on Sportsnet 960 The Fan immediately following every game. And Blair Jones gives us another winner by swiping a free club card. Justin Marlowe of Red Deer has won a Hoover Wind Tunnel might multi-cyclonic bagless canister courtesy of Safeway and Sunrite Juice Blend from Concentrate. Shane O'Brien sitting for two minutes. Look at the cross-checking call right at the end of the play. Protecting his goaltender. When you start looking at tight games like this, you've got to be disciplined. That's Stajan with Puma going to the net. Puma has it, plays it off the side. And Thomas is there, forced to cover it. It's Calgary blitzing shorthanded. Tim Thomas, the veteran, has been through that a couple of times. It's a little combination here, a killing penalty, Stajan and Lance Bulma. Of course, the key to good penalty kill is to win that first faceoff, which they did in the defensive zone, and that sets up an opportunity. Bulma really knew he was at a bad angle, and he's just trying to bank it in off the back of the goaltender's legs. Flames killed off all three. Is Michael Backlund side of the net, and Thomas forced to make another save. This time he drops the stick, Alahashik, and picks up the puck with the blocker. He's going to say the Flames a perfect three for three against Columbus on Wednesday. Three for three so far in this game. Michael Backlund very active offensively. Mistake, miscue there by the Panthers, unfortunately uh, for Michael Backlund. Veteran Tim Thomas was standing kind of casual there for a second, but really got into defensive mode very quickly. Offensive faceoff for Calgary, killing a penalty. Bukestad gets thrown out, as does Backlund. So Gomez comes in to take the draw with Stepniak. It's won by Scott Gomez. Dmitry Kulikov with the puck. Tipped ahead by Campbell. Huberdeau, back to Gomez. Bukestad. Up a point on Tom Gilbert's first period goal. Comes to Stepniak and he'll dump it down the ice with 80 seconds to go in this power play for Florida. Very efficient penalty kill so far here tonight for the Flames. They've been able to get the puck down the ice, which allows them to get fresh bodies out there about every 20 seconds. Weidman behind the net, flips it to the corner. It's picked up by the Panthers. Brody spins away looking for it. Pin balls deep in Calgary territory comes to Brody. It's down the ice. Another quick line change. The boards changing very quickly, so uh, that's a sign of a great penalty kill. Dmitry Kulikov, 23 year old Russian, gets it across the line, but it's given right back to Calgary. Another chance. Backlund with Stepniak charging in. Stepniak! Oh, he couldn't handle it clean. Comes out of the corner. Lee Stepniak looking for it. So far in this Florida power play, the scoring chances have belonged to the Flames. Lee Stepniak was hot earlier in the year. Everything he was touching was going in. Just a little bit off at this point, but he's still getting the opportunities. Blair Jones scored his first game back with Calgary. Out there killing this penalty. As advertised, Bob Hartley talked about it this morning. He expected to use Jones in all situations. Good to see Ladislav Schmid back out there. He blocked the shot. He did help off earlier in the period, but he's out there defending. As O'Brien's back out there. Calgary a perfect four for four, killing penalties. Perfect timing for Schmid in these four days coming on after this game, uh, especially blocking shots like that. Brody has the puck. Russell. Got to be thinking offense. Want to put this one out of reach if they can. Up by one. Russell to Berchi. Shoots. Thomas flutters it in front of him. And he doesn't like Monaghan being there and lets him know. Ah, oh, there's some emotion here at the Dome tonight. A little energy.
BPL English Soccer begins 5.30 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow morning on Sportsnet West, Pacific East, and Ontario. Second place Liverpool will travel to sixth place Everton. Following that on the same channels at 7.30 Mountain, Norwich City will visit Newcastle United. And at the same time on Sportsnet World, Crystal Palace looks to turn things around as they visit the Hull City Tigers. Shots 18-16 in favor of Calgary. And the Flames up 3-2 on Florida here. And what has been a wild third period. Berchi backhands it to the corner. Cabranson comes over. Whacks it away from Monaghan. But Hoodler coming over trying to take it away from Mathias. Butler covering at the red line. To Weidman. And they play this one off the glass and in. Otto to Mathias, but intercepting it is Hoodler. Hoodler for Calgary, spins in the corner. He'll give it to Butler, he's going to play it deep, coming over. This Camilleri, Thomas down, where's the puck? It's behind him now in the corner. That was a little awkward for the veteran netminder. Monaghan, as Gabranson tried to, was he trying to draw a penalty? Charlie just kind of exploded there when Monaghan lifted the stick. He's favoring his left ankle, so I'm not sure if he twisted it after that. He's on the bench having a look at it. I think it was just a skate issue as they're attending to it right now. Campbell loses it. Stajan trying to knock it out in front to Camilleri. He's knocked down on the play. There's Scott Gomez rushing across the line. Campbell's save rebound was there momentarily taken away. And the Flames will get it out. They turn it right over to Brian Campbell. He'll play it back in. Tobera, his ninth start, looking for his first home win, looking for his first win in regulation. There's Brody, give and go. Camilleri, Calgary, making a couple of line adjustments. Bye. And that one's going to be an icing call as they look for Jones at the blue line. This is a replica of the remote that inspired the big win. The original was tragically lost in a couch. Pick your winners today with Pools. Shop and swipe your club card at Safeway today, and you could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts, and you can win a week of unlimited luxury at Dreams Resorts and Spas, courtesy of RedTag.ca. That stage is going to get thrown out of this draw on the right side, so David Jones will come in, loses it. It comes back to Kulikov. Shot up high and off the crossbar. Whoa, Red Obera as Kulikov let that one go, and you kind of saw Obera jerk up at the end. Quick release here as Lance Bomo goes out to try and block it. But this was a bouncing puck right off the get-go, and it was top shelf. That wasn't uh, the point where he was trying to get control of it. He just wanted to get some good velocity on that one. Kulikov's had a very good game for Florida tonight. As has Lance Bomo. Plays it off the boards and out. You see Colburn back out there as well. He left early in the third period after blocking the shot. It was a costly shift there. It was the same shift of both Schmid and Colburn uh, getting hit by pucks. Schmid hitting Upshaw, Colburn with the puck. Flip it out, kept in, Upshaw side of the net, sneaking in is Kulikov, Fleischman with it, he misses wide. Again, Calgary failing to get the puck out when they have an opportunity. Players looking to see, think that hit the mesh after it went off of the glove of Retavera, but game control the puck, you have to make sure you get that puck out. Upshaw with Gilroy. Gilroy in traffic, hits Upshaw, puck goes wide. To Brad Boys, his pass outside the line, and Gilbert back to the red line for the Panthers. Now a giveaway, Monaghan to Hoodler, to Berchi. Looking for Monaghan, he's got it! The reigning Calder Trophy candidate, or winner, I suppose, came back on a nice defensive play. Nice passing by Calgary, but a little too much stick work at the end. Berchi to Hoodler, and he'll tap it in. And Berchi has had some good looks at some more goals tonight. That's where you like to see your youngster start shooting that puck a little bit more, especially in a tight game like this. Campbell. Ooh! Lucky there, as Tim Thomas hit the deck. Nobody's safe right now. Gotch across the line, shoots, and Barrett blockers that one away. 
Another blocker saved by Barra in the corner. Spinning around. Puck comes out in front. Got back to the point. Kulikov looking for a lane. Lays it in the middle, but it comes right to Camilleri. His pass hits Bergenheim to Dodge. Holds up, shoots. Barra, no! They score! It made its way through Barra. I thought Barra had it squeezed. But it ends up in the net, and the Panthers have come back to tie it at three. Last three shifts, the Flames have had control of the puck, and who ends up with the best scoring opportunities? The Florida Panthers, and these are these tight things you have to learn how to win in the National Hockey League. As Michael Camilleri ended up with control of it right here, bounces off. He's trying to send a quick pass up the ice, hits the back of the Panther player, and then Gotch gets it. Takes a good hard snapshot. And Retavera has it, has it? No, he doesn't. Went right between the arm and the body. So all of a sudden, very quickly, the Panthers have tied this up. So a 3 1 third period lead has now turned into a 3 3 hockey game as Gotch picks up his sixth of the year. And they, we have seen nothing but craziness here in the third period. As Gomez and Bergenheim will get the assist on Gotch's goal. And the Panthers now out shooting Calgary 22 to 18. Florida like to do their business in the third period. That's when they've scored their most goals, and that continues here in this game. And another icing call against Calgary. We'll have a look at this play again as uh, Michael Camilleri has it. It goes off of uh, Bergenheim to Gomez, back to Gok, I should say, at that point, And he lets it go very quickly. And Barra cannot get that arm closed quick enough. 3-3 three, three hockey game. Nearing the five minute to go mark here in the third. Flames played overtime on Wednesday. They went to a shootout on Monday. Is extra time looming here at the Dome? Puck brought in offside by Upshaw. Calgary and the Panthers tied. Bob Hartman looking for a hero late in the third. Hockey telecast on Sportsnet West Monday night. Edmonton will host the Chicago Blackhawks beginning with our pregame show at 7 p.m. Mom. And tell us Flames hockey is back one week from today. An American Thanksgiving Friday matinee when Calgary visits the Anaheim Ducks. It all gets underway at 1.30 p.m. Mountain on Sportsnet West. There's lots of time to think about the games to come, but right now it's the game in front of us. 3-3 Calgary and the Florida Panthers. Florida now out shooting Calgary 22-18 and have outshot the Flames 9-4 here in the third. They kept the intensity up for pretty much all game. A couple of little tiny mistakes uh, in the uh, their own defensive zone, which the Flames have also made, to, which cost them the last two goals. Chris Russell finds T.J. Brody to Mike Camilleri. Stepniak getting it deep. Gilbert after it, stage and trailing him. Upshaw has Camilleri right on top of him. The Flames have the puck. Camilleri to Stepniak out in front. Bounces around, Camilleri gets a swipe at it, it comes free. Stepniak's looking for it. Stajan dives out, but it's Upshaw with the puck. And he gets it to Campbell. The defenseman leading the rush, shoots, and Vera makes another blocker stop. Stepniak flipping it through the air. This one bounces back, Gilroy has Berchi right on top of it. Gotch, getting it deep, Schmid after it. Holds up, four minutes to go in the third period. We're all tied at three. Kulikov in his own end. As Fleischman jumps over the boards, this is going to be an icing call. And to get us a uh, sneak peek in what's coming up on Connected, let's send it to George Poplis and Brendan Benoit. Hopefully we'll get some overtime coming after the game. You're going to see a lot of stuff on Connected, the full hockey story and post-game reaction. Plus, do the Eskimos have a new head coach in the CFL? We'll see you later. Busy Friday night, not only in hockey, but the world of sports. Connected will get you caught up in all of it. Fleischman, cross ice, looking for Barkov. The rookie goes wide, still with it. Boys can't get the shot through as Jones blocks it. That's David Jones. Colmore trying to get through the air. Knocked down. Kulikov got a paw on it. Play it back into the Calgary end. 
Russell ahead. Bowman tipping it in. Gilbert back to get it. Campbell slices it back to the red line and retreating to pick it up is T.J. Brody. We're not taking any chances here defensively. Once they get that control of that puck, if there's no direct pass, they're just making sure they get that puck out of harm's way. Huberto getting it back in the Calgary end. Russell has to be careful. Upshaw gets to it first behind the net. Bukestad battling with T.J. Brody. Huberto comes in, but it's Bukestad with the puck into the slot. Upshaw, and it's blocked. Chris Russell right there. That was a big block for the Flames. Such a great and quick transition game here by Florida. And that goes back to... Peter Horacek's way of uh, getting this team turned around. He really has his defensemen get involved in the play, both offensively and defensively. Chris Butler back to get it. 2.20 to go in the third period. Shots are 23-19 in favor of Florida. Berchi looking for Hoodler. Pass didn't get to him. The fans trying to do their part for the home club. Monaghan has it for Calgary across the line. Monaghan goes around Thomas in front. Berchi swirls it to the net, but it never made it. What a play by Sean Monaghan to buy himself some room. All night there's been those loose pucks just sitting there, and that's the intensity uh, that the uh, players have to really bring into a game like this, especially a tied game. Monaghan, the outlet for Schmid, the 19-year-old. His pass broken up. Boyce has it for Florida. Shoots and flutters into Vera, and he will hang on to it for a faceoff. 125 to go here in the third. Sean Ma Monahan, a good burst to get around the defenseman right here. Fake shot, and then he knows he has everybody caught out of position. Uh, Sven Berchi couldn't get a handle. It had already gone by Yuri Hoodler as he was going right at the net. And the youngster Barkov comes up with a huge uh, assist to Tim Thomas. And the Panthers trying to make a late change. They're not going to get away with it. As Gabranson is ushered back to the players' bench. Draw one, Colburn. Has a goal in this game, his third of the season goals in consecutive games for Joe Colburn. Picked up by Upshaw. Seems like we've seen a lot of Scotty Upshaw here in the third period. Bukestad upset. He's back up, has the puck. Upshaw with it. Shoots. That one's blocked by Russell. There's one middle remaining in the third period. And the whistle goes face off. Coming out in the neutral zone. Scott Upshaw, a big goal last night in Edmonton, as mentioned from Ford McMurray. Very close to. Lots of milestones, four away from 100 goals, three away from 100 assists. You add those together, and that's 100, 100 makes 200. That's simple math right there. If you're going to do it, do it that way. 434 career games. 10 points in his last 11 games coming into action tonight. Bergenheim dumping it in, trying to work on Schmid. And defenseman held up, loses it, Bergenheim. But that one's intercepted by Stepniak. Gives it away at the blue line, but Gotch took it back out into the neutral zone. Calgary's yeah. been turning pucks over at the blue line here in the third period. Well, most of the all game, too, and the reason that the defensemen of Florida are really staying in of that offensive zone. They're not backing off that line very often. Calgary get it back to center. A hard time getting it deep. We go, we'd be looking at overtime. Third time this week for Calvert. Campbell. Behind Huberto. Gains the line. Russell has it. Trying to hold up Huberto. Played out to the point, but again, Calgary can't clear the zone. We are going to overtime for the third time this week. Calgary is going to play more than 60 minutes. Reto Barrow would like to just be skating off the ice with his first home ice regular time victory, but he can't because of the push back by the Panthers as they score two goals here after the Flames get a 3-1 lead in the third period. Tell us Flames Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by 
Tell us, the future is friendly. Not sure what to expect in overtime. Both clubs with very similar records of two and four. The Panthers have played mostly in shootouts, while Calgary, quite honestly, Charlie, it's been overtime, and they've really struggled giving up overtime goals at home this year. They're 0-3 in overtime at home. Unfortunately for them, too, it's because of their own doing, uh, not only to get into the overtime, but uh, the overtime losses. They seem to have had great scoring opportunities offensively, uh, but they turn around and make one mistake defensively, and it's in the back of their net. Uh, so that's that intensity Bob Hartley keeps on talking about. Every game you've got to learn something. You've got to come away with something. The Toronto Maple Leafs are defying the conventions of hockey analytics. No, it's not a fluke, but the game they're playing has no margin for error. Subscribe today at www.sportsnet.ca slash magazine. So the Calgary Flames, who won 5-4 in a shootout on Monday in Winnipeg and then lost 2-1 here at the Dome to Columbus on Wednesday, are back in the extra frame. They have lost to Vancouver, San Jose, and the Columbus Blue Jackets here at overtime. They have not gone to a shootout in Calgary yet this year. And the Panthers, well, they tend to get to the shootouts, and from there, you never know. Stajan and Bukestad is a rookie. Talking it over the official, doesn't like the way that Stajan set up. Panthers win it. Out shooting Calgary 24-19 through 60 minutes. Flames with a 3-1 lead in the third period with the Panthers answering back. Gomez, his pass back to the point. Now we got a race for it. Stepniak trying to get around Campbell. Lee Stepniak with some room. Stepniak and a great play by Gilbert comes back and Stepniak's stick is shattered. Here's Gomez. Storms up the ice. Nope, he's going to go back as he saw his teammates were making a change. Dennis LaRue blew an edge as he was trying to get out of the way of that race, and Felice Stepniak put a lot on that shot, unfortunately snapped the stick right now. Barkov, as that one is hugged into the body by Loretto Perra. Stepniak with a, just a step and a half to get things started. Couldn't get around Campbell clean enough right at his own blue line, but once he got the speed up, he was off to the races there. It was just he had to get around at that last point. Gilbert comes back to help out. Down goes Denny LaRue. And the stick gets broken. What else do you want to happen in overtime in one play? Face off to the right of Reto Berra. Won again by the Panthers. Kulikov has it. His shot up high. Blocked down by TJ Brody. Three on two Calgary. Brody to Colborn. In front. That one whistles wide. Calgary's going to have to hustle to get back. Upshaw, working one-on-one -on -one with Russell. And the Panthers make a change in the back end. Now the Florida Panthers have four players out there. It's Huberdeau in the corner, taken away by Brody. Colborn with it. Colborn buying some time. Russell with it in his own end. Watched by Huberdeau. Chris Russell, overtime hero for Calgary, November 3rd in Chicago. Buying just enough time to get his teammates uh, fresh bodies out there. Wide with the pass, hits a stick, comes back, but he'll be out on the ice with Schmid. Monaghan gives up the puck. Matthias has it for Florida. Here's Gilbert to Matthias. Now we get it back. Schmid cross ice, Weidman. Now Ladislav Schmid. Even in overtime, tight defensive play by Florida through that neutral ice zone. Butler to Berchi. Berchi. Anga Branson goes wide. Still has it. Berchi in the corner. Gains some room. Comes back to the point. Brody down low. Off the side of the net. Camilleri with a one-timer. Bounces it on Thomas. And the Panther netminder has to be wise about how he plays it. Then Berchi bringing that puck in offensively, a couple stutter steps, and he's able to move it around very quickly to the one-timer to Michael Camilleri. That one just missed getting back to Camilleri, as you'd expect a fine defensive play of the veteran defenseman Brian Campbell of the Panthers. Right here gets his skate and stick in the way. The veteran goaltender Thomas, very sharp on that near side post. 
These two teams will play April 4th back in Florida. He's back to Brody. Stead got a stick on it, but not enough. As Brody has it. Stepniak parked in front. Russell shot in traffic. And the helmet comes off on Thomas. And a whistle goes, and the faceoff stays in the Florida end. Fans were just looking at that loose puck. That's where the jeering was going on. But uh, once that helmet comes off of the goaltender, Lee Stepniak stuck way out in front, doing a good job on Kulikov. As he comes close to the front of the net for the redirect, there comes the helmet off. The whistle goes. Tim Thomas waking, making his way back into his cage. And he uses a different cage. Kind of an old school mask helmet combination. Russell with the puck. Shoots just wide. Stepniak along the boards. Gilbert in his hip pocket. Gets it back to stage and no he doesn't. Campbell has it. Barkov. Cross ice to Gilbert. It skips on him. Now he has it. Campbell. Cuts into the Calgary end. Shoots. It goes off a of body to the boards. Boys. Smother. Two minutes to go in overtime. Russell to Stepniak. And Stepniak to Weidman. Shoots off the arm of Thomas into the mesh. Another face off in the Panther end. He's um, getting much better control to the neutral ice zone here at this point. As Lee Stepniak, nice little move to stutter step across the line. Weidman, Weidman just coming on that line change is able to jump up into the play. A pretty tough angle to score from that position, but uh, at least when you have traffic going at the net, which was Sean Monahan, you have a chance. Monahan in to take the draw. After it, Matthias plays it ahead, but Schmid will get to it. Over to Wyden. Bounces it off the side of the net. Panthers get it back, but they were already in a defensive posture. Barkov back to the blue line, gets around, or pardon me, Matthias back to the blue line. Gets around Weidman. Loses his stick, Monahan with it to Hoodler. He'll hold up. Calgary's going to make some changes. 110 to go in overtime. Chris Butler, rare overtime shift. Shot, Thomas makes the save. Now Russell. Third right, round of boards, Bear Chief. Taken away by Gilbert. Matthias. It's caught up in the referee, and Berchi gets it back to Camilleri. Gilbert has time, gives it up. Russell shoots, and Thomas grabs it out of midair. Tim Thomas, old school hockey here as far as goaltender. He's not just a blocker, he's a goaltender. And you can see, it's quite evident, how far he is out outside the blue paint. Oh, most of the shots come from the point. He's trying to get out well past the crease area. And that just cuts down the angle and the percentage area uh, that players can shoot at. And hopefully, as he'd be thinking that, I know it's hard to think this, that it actually hits him. 40 seconds to go here in the overtime period. Gilbert ahead. Fleischman drops it. Gotcha shot goes wide. Comes all the way back to Brian Campbell at his own blue line. Being hounded by Matt Stajan. Marcel Gotch. The Branson. Right up the middle. Campbell to Gotch. Back to the Branson. Shot goes off a stick. Comes around the boards. Campbell will get to it first. Looking for Fleischman. Behind the Flames net. Gotch. And that will do it. Overtime comes to an end. We're going to a shootout for the first time here in Calgary this season. The home fans will be entertained by a shootout. Flames out shoot the Panthers 5-2 to two in that overtime. But uh, I think they'll look right now at, to the point where they knew this game should have been over a while ago. It's just a couple of defensive mistakes as they were leaving their zone. So 
They don't get the two points right away, and now we get some of the more exciting parts of the game on the shootout. It's our game review brought to you by Intact Insurance. Your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. Panthers, again, they've scored 26 of their total goals in that third period. They get two tonight to get things tied up. Big Joe is on a roll. Colburn, a goal and an assist. Much better in the second half of the game in face-offs. And welcome back, Mr. Jones. Not David Jones. Blair Jones scores his first goal of the season in his first game since his recall. We'll take you all the way back to the first period when the scoring started, and it was the Panthers who found the back of the net first. Right off the face-off, uh, a bouncing puck as Tom Gilbert gets his first of the year. And then a good, strong forecheck by the Flames, started by Lance Bulma. And Jones sets up Joe Colburn for his third of the year. And the Flames get things tied up. And then Sven Berchi on the power play. Sven Berchi a second of the year. Into the third period. Down low, grinding along the boards. Great plays here as they're able to find Jones coming in. And he made no mistake there. That was his first of the year. And then it just seemed to get a little bit trouble for the Flames right here. As Hayes picks up an Eric. Clearing pass by the goaltender, Hereto Barra for his first of the year. And Marcel Gotch gets his sixth of the year as the Flames give up control of the puck again in the defensive zone from Gomez and Bergenheim. So three mistakes by the Flames cost them again tonight's game so far. And for the third time this season, the Calgary Flames are going to a shootout. It's the first one here at the Dome. Patience. For families who may not know about it, the Flames Foundation supports the Even Strength program for kids who may not be able to afford the cost of hockey. For more information on this program, partner with Kids Sport and Hockey Calgary, visit calgaryflames.com. Take a look at Tim Thomas, who has seen his fair share of shootouts. And this season, he is 2-0 has not given up a goal on the five shots that he has faced for the Panthers. And that's surprising because you try to describe, and not, again, not a negative surprising because his his, his goaltender style, you really can't put a handle on it, whether he's a strong, lower uh, goaltender like Bear that has great leg strength and able to stretch out because of his height advantage. And on the other hand, he does get that body in the way of anything that comes at him. So it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to work against uh, Thomas, whether they're going to be shooters for the Flames or Deekers. And uh, the first one, Joel Colborne. And I think we know what to expect from Colborne, who beat Al Montoya Monday night in Winnipeg right away to give the, the Flames the lead in that shootout. And you kind of knew when he scored his first goal in Phoenix on a breakaway that this would be his destiny. Well, he's got a go-to move. Uh, but on the other hand, we've seen him do a few other moves here in, in practice, and that's something you have to be very creative because, hey, there's video out there now where they watch all the games, and this is a big part of games uh, preparation. If it goes in the shootout, what kind of moves can you move? Joe Colborn one-on-one -on -one with Tim Thomas. Colborn one-for-one one this season in the shootout. In and misses the outside of the post. Went to the backhand this time, Charlie. Well, Thomas was favoring that move right here. You see him coming all the way across, and there's the lack of leg extension that he has compared to a lot of the taller goaltenders in the league. Uh, but he was able to throw Colburn off just enough. Jonathan Huberdeau is a mainstay in shootouts this season for Florida. He is two for five up against Reto Berra who has stopped six of the eight shots he faced against Winnipeg. Can he stop Huberdeau? Yes! He does with the poke check. Trademark play so far in the young career of Retavera. How far he comes out of this crease area, the blue area. Look how far he is and very active stick at that point. He doesn't even allow Huberdeau to make any kind of a move. Gary Hoodler to shoot for Calgary. He's 0 for 2 this year, but you look at the career numbers and they're very strong. And to this point, Tim Thomas, this is the seventh shootout attempt he's faced this year. He stopped the six previous. Can he stop Hoodler? In. Score! Oh, pretty quick hands there. Uh, definitely, and I think Tim Thomas anticipated the shot here. He was mad at himself after the play. He's out. 
He went for that first fake, and I think that's what really threw him off. Very quick movement, and then right underneath the bar for Yuri Hoodler. Oh, we saw one rookie score first ever shootout goal this week in Sean Monahan. What about Barkov? He's already got it. This is his fourth attempt of the year. Barkov in on Barra. Kicks the leg. Hits the post. How about this for scripting as Red Barra getting a little help from the iron. Great move there uh, by the rookie Barkov. He goes right to the forehand and uh, put it off the post. Blair Jones has a goal in his NHL return tonight. Does he have a shootout goal? The Wiley veteran Tim Thomas stands between him and a Flames victory. Jones in. Missed the net. Same type of move as Barkov. This time he put it up over the net. And a quick movement of the hands, trying to get the goaltender to move across. There was some space up above that glove. Now it's Brad Boys against Reto Berra. Look at Berra's stance. An invitee for training camp, signed a contract right out of tra uh, training camp, did Boys. Berra stops this, the Flames win. He does it. Boys keeps it alive for Florida. Four, three for four on the, on the season right here. He moves across, he's able to get those pads open and then turns it over very quickly. Now oh, Mike Camilleri for Calgary. He missed Monday in Winnipeg, but again, another guy with really good historical numbers. He is the fourth shooter. Facing Tim Thomas. Here comes Camilleri across the line. He goes wide. Score! Have the Flames seen something, Charlie? Well, a little Alex Tange type of move where he, he goes wide and the shooting of Mike Camilleri is so accurate. Uh, right here, he gets Tim Thomas moving across. Leaning and I think Thomas thought he was going to come all the way across and went back across the body and went short side Above the glove Now Thomas Fleischman needs to score for Florida Reto Berra looking for the stop What a goal by Fleischman That was pretty That's pretty as they come right there again. You look at the creativity of these young players Fleischman, one, two, three moves, and then got to the backhand as uh, Retta Barra missed with a, a semi-poke check. Didn't get the full extension. Stepniak, one for one this year, scoring in Winnipeg on Monday. Fifth shooter. Calgary and Winnipeg combining for 16 shooters. That was the longest shootout so far this season. Stepniak in on Thomas, stopped by Tim Thomas. Thomas came out very aggressive this time and stayed out and took away the shot right here. Just followed Stepniak in, and then there was a space right between the pads, right there. And that's where Thomas is able to slam that left pad. Nick Bukestad. Getting set up. Bukestad can win it here for Florida. Vera. Doesn't get any easier for this young goaltender, Bear, does it? Again, he's looking for the victory. This time he stays right with it, and you've got to have your nerves start to get to you at this point when you start getting up to these numbers. Sean Monahan was the hero on Monday. Will he be the hero tonight? One for one with that shot just above the right pad in Winnipeg. Monahan. In on Thomas. Score! Almost identical move. Oh, right there, he came in, and that's a confident young man right there. Coming across. Good hard snapshot to Thomas. Slamming the post after it. I think he realized he was out of position on that shot. So you try to have the goaltender back at it at an angle where he's not comfortable with, and it opens up a side. 
Jimmy Hayes scored his first goal of the season, his first as a Panther, now his first ever shootout attempt in on Barra. And Barra needs to make a save for a win, he does! Calgary win just their seventh shootout at home of all time, but it's a big one, 4-3 over the Florida Panthers. Great composure by the 26-year-old Aretta Barra, and he just doesn't stop at three. He's got to go up to five, six, even eight in Winnipeg to come away with a victory. But this is huge two points for the Flames. They have four days off before Chicago comes in next Wednesday. So to give the hometown fans a big overtime thrill victory, it's a big plus for them. So a week which sees the Calgary Flames bookend the business side of five days with two shootout wins. They take a five of a possible six points in their last three games, and they are fired up. It wasn't easy as the Panthers wouldn't go away, but Calgary get a very important victory. So the Flames now get a four-day break as they Got up 3-1 in the third period. Credit the Panthers, they battled back. But in the shootout, how about this shot? Monaghan with his second shootout goal in five days. And the Flames snap a six-game home losing skin.